Hello and welcome to this BFI at Home discussion about The Time is New selections from contemporary Arab cinema, a season running both at BFI Southbank and on the BFI Player. My name is Elham Shakarifa. I'm a London based producer and curator and have been the London Film Festival advisor for films from the Middle East, North Africa, and the Gulf since 2015. And I'm delighted to be in conversation with this uh, season's curators. Alia Ayman and Youssef Shazli. Alia and Youssef were co-founders of Zawiya Cinema in Cairo, which launched in March 2014 and has become a key cultural hub for art house and independent cinema in Egypt. Today, Youssef is Zawiya's director and Alia is writing a PhD relating to decoloniality, difference and the global circulation of documentary images. She also regularly curates independent film and moving image, having worked with the likes of Berlinale Forum, ITFA, Black Star Film Festival, and Flaherty. Our discussion will run for about 40 minutes, during which we will talk about the curatorial approach to the season as a whole, as well as to focus on three films in more depth, Talking About Trees by Suhaib Kespen Barry, Let's Talk by Marianne Khoury, and It Must Be Heaven by Elia Suleiman. We will be screening a short clip of each of these, but we'll avoid spoilers and all three films are available to watch on the BFI player. Welcome to you both. Um, to begin, I thought it would be great to reflect on the season as a whole. And I often think about the responsibility we have as curators who work in specific areas or languages in relation to the expectation of giving a snapshot um, of spaces and people who are obviously much more diverse and disparate than one film or even a dozen films can hold. But there's also the work of the meta-narrative, the link between films, and I really appreciated the words used in your written introduction on the website, positioning the films as work that celebrates the potential of imagination as a path to politics of freedom. It's as if through the dialogue between films, this season comes with an inbuilt invitation to challenge single understandings, stereotypes or preconceptions. So with this in mind, could you tell us a little bit about your selection process? Okay. Uh, well, first of all, maybe, uh, I mean, I, I would just say that this whole season came uh, really uh, as an opportunity uh, uh, as I was uh, in London uh, two years ago uh, doing my scumment at the BFI. I spent six weeks uh, working at the South Bank venue with uh, the great team there and I got to know everyone. And uh, as we uh, were discussing, you know, our the kind of work that uh, could be done during my time there. Uh, it was proposed that uh, I come up uh, with a program um, of uh, Arab cinema that could potentially be shown at the, as one of the seasons running at the BFI uh, later on. And it's exactly what happened. Uh, I mean, as I was there, I invited Alia to, to uh, curate this program with me. Uh, and uh, we presented something to the BFI team, which, uh, which is now being shown at the South Bank venues two years later. So uh, this is how this whole thing uh, happened to be. And uh, really like we, me, Ali and I each have a personal relationship with most of the, you know, all of the films being streamed in a different way. And, and this is, it was a case by case um, selection, I'd say like we, at the end of the day, there was the only clear thread that that tied all these films together for us was uh, how they have really affected us in different ways and uh, really spoke to us and spoke of of the realities that we're currently living so um, so yeah this is how more or less it came to be yeah and and Ellen, you said something that i think is very interesting about how challenging it is to to program um films from a particular area, from a region, from the Arab world, from somewhere. And that, 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 that expectation of these films like um, showing the culture. I think when we were working on this program, we were more concerned or like we were more inspired by showing the filmmakers, showing the different you know, practices, the, the, the different interests that artists in the region have, as opposed to showing films about things that are happening in the region, I think we were more interested in sort of, um, you know, introducing a group of filmmakers to an audience in the UK. I think this is, this was uh, the way that I personally was able to, um, you know, think about it without feeling like this program is just like presenting the Arab world on a plate 
for Europe to consume, you know, so. I understand that. I have a question um, about, I guess, cur curating together, because you're both now in slightly different contexts to when you previously worked together. Alia, you're in New York, Yusuf, you're in um, Cairo. So working on a program in the UK, and how, how did you think and conceptualize the audience that you were making this program for? I, I have to confess, I mean, I, when we, first of all, Ali and I have been working together for a few years and we are very used to uh, working together. We have, uh, I think in lots of ways, we complement each other because, uh, you know, uh, we, this is how Zawiya came to be. I mean, we, we bring to, we brought to this project our different uh, know-how and skill set, which is very different from uh, one another. So this, the, the same happened, I think, for this program because, you know, uh, I think we have a dynamic where Alia throws the ideas and then I, I uh, like uh, kind of uh, put, you know, put them in a certain direction. And, uh, and, and with, I mean, for me, with the, I, have, I don't have a very strong knowledge of the audience in the UK and, uh, or the audience of the BFI. So this was for me challenging. I mean, when we program films in Cairo uh, at our cinema, it's kind of based on a relationship that already exists with our audience that we've built throughout the years and we, we, we have learned to understand what might or might not interest them. Uh, here it was, it was more challenging. It was uh, for me also, it was my first program uh, done yeah, outside of Egypt. And so I, I was more interested in showing films that I really wanted to be seen in London. That was simply it. And, and this is the relationship that I built with each film in a certain way. And, and so I, I felt that these films, I wanted to give them this ex kind of exposure. To who and who, which kind of audience will see them? Uh, is it uh, you know, is the Arab diaspora in London or is it a very in London? You know, I don't know. I, I, I'm actually this is something that I would be more interested to know. But, but it's really about uh, the an individual case by case. You know, about these films and wanting to uh, give them more exposure. I guess. Yeah, I mean, also echoing what Yusuf was saying. I think for me, what was interesting was thinking about this as some sort of like um, an exchange between Zawiya and the BFI. So it's in my head, it's like taking Zawiya there, right? In, in, in some sort of way. And I'm not sure who the audience is. I've actually, I'm very quite unfamiliar with the um, specific specificities of the UK film scene in general, but I can't imagine it would be that different from New York or Berlin. Um, or like, you know, other places where we work. And I think the challenges are always there, um, especially when, again, presenting Arab cinema to a Western audience, it just, you know, there's always this concern. And I personally try to, to um, you know, not do that a lot, um, to not work in area focused or like curate geographically in general. Uh, so it's so it's interesting. I mean, it sucks that we can't be there to see it and to see how the audience is going to respond and you know react to the films. Um, but there's also a huge diaspora everywhere. So in a way, I'm excited also about that potential, right? Of like just you know, I know when when I'm in New York and some like Arab films come to me, I'm very happy and I'm I feel like home and I see a lot of friends and you know we go out later. So I hope at least people get to do that after with our program. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be creating those connections. And of course, there are three films that are also available on the BFI player, and so they'll have a much broader reach. Um, those films are Talking About Trees, Let's Talk, and It Must Be Heaven. And thinking about them, they make a really interesting trio, um, kind of relating to cinema in very different ways, what it can do, what it can be, what it can change, but also what it needs to survive, which is this kind of tension between um, audience and decision making, which we can talk about a little bit more. Um, but maybe we can start by talking about uh, talking about trees. Um, the title itself is a reference to Brecht, a poem in which he asks, what kind of times are these when to talk about trees is almost a crime because it implies the silence about so many horrors. And it's referenced in the film by Manar and Hilo, one of the four filmmakers that the film centers alongside Ibrahim Shaddad. Suleiman Ibrahim and El Tayeb Mahdi. They were all celebrated when they first started making films in the 70s and the 80s, but they haven't made films for years, not since the 1989 military coup. 
And so the film follows their quest to revamp an old cinema um, and find an audience for it. إذا أيها الأصدقاء اليوم عبر الصفحة الأولى نعود مرة أخرى السينما السودانية البطل الذي أفلام أكبر يا إخواننا عايزين نشغل سينما الثورة ودي حارتكم ودي سينمتكم هلموا هلموا هذا فيلمكم الذي اخترتوه عشان ما بعرف فيكم يجي يقول لي فيلم كعب الصور يعني ستة جوامع في المحيط ده مش ممكن لا السينما هتبتدي بعد الاذان بتاع العشاء أول أفريقي يدرس السينما أنتوا قايلين لي موجود قبل غير هاي النازل دارين طبعا عندهم قروض كده لمدة شهر أمن والمخابرات زي شو كنا كويسين شغل كبير هاي شغل كبير And so it's a film of great nostalgia and camaraderie, but also real homage to this space of being together and sharing something, something that you've just talked about earlier. And I wondered whether you could reflect on that further in the context of that film specifically. Yeah, I mean, when we when we wanted to show this film, I think, um, you know, it, it's, it's, so, it's so interesting for many reasons. But Yusuf and I were talking the other day about, you know, how their attempt to find the space for films to, re, to, to, to revamp this new cinema, to connect with people when there were instances where, where they were asking the audience what kind of films they would like to see in this new cinema. I personally could really relate because of course, you know, the context in Sudan and in Egypt is drastically different. Sudan had like a complete like rupture in its like cinema industry at some point while Egypt kept it going. Uh, but I also, you know, there are so many affinities that I have with this experience because when we started Zawiya, for example, there was always this feeling like, yes, you know, film spaces in Cairo have always been around, but this particular kind of a film space that's run by people who really are into cinema and who want it to be a hub for, you know, artists, filmmakers, cinephile, and so on, it was really like, um, like seeing it in Sudan and, and connecting it to our experience in Cairo, but not not only in Cairo, also there are so many spaces in the region recently that have been like uh, opening up over maybe the past, I don't know, 10 years. Um, so seeing this experience in Sudan was really exciting because also uh, the fact that it was, you know, like the, that the people who were trying to make it happen were these like really established filmmakers who are not young and who are not just starting out and the fact that they are almost in their like 50s or 60s and like still going and still have this passion to you know m make a space where people can come and connect and and you know watch films uh i think i think it's inspiring for everybody and then there's also the archive question right uh that the film raises um which is also i think resonates with uh with many of us. Um, I mean, you have another student, great Sudanese film, if you wanted to talk a little bit about um, You Will Die at 20. So yes, and that there are two Sudanese films in the program, the second You Will Die at 20 by Amjad Dabolala, and uh, uh, very different. Uh, this one is uh, fiction, it's his first feature, and uh, uh, very mystical uh, film uh, that has a very interesting story. I, I really invite also, uh, you know, people, uh, the audience at the BFI to, to discover this film, uh, we we've shown it uh, here at Zawiya. It was one of our lo longest uh, lasting releases, uh, which went out for I think six or seven months. Um, but it's also yeah, it's interesting to see this uh, wave of Sudanese cinema all of a sudden uh, appearing, and uh, and and the fact that they have been able to make these films with uh, in the way that they have wanted to make them uh, with the challenges that are going on in Sudan today is, is quite admirable, uh, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, and then talking about trees, I, I saw it the first time at Berenale. I was really like very, very moved. I, I 
I, I also, other than everything that Alia said and the fact that I completely relate with the struggle of the four characters and the, you know, this idea of creating a space for films to be shown is, is kind of our story in, 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 in many ways. Uh, but also the, the, the dynamic between and the relationship between the characters themselves and the way Soheb was able to capture that very, very, you know, genuinely and, uh, and through his own eye, which I really, really uh, appreciated. So it's, I think it's very, on many levels, it's, it's a film that's, that speaks and, 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 it's a, and it's a very touching story as well. I mean, I remember seeing them the four characters appear after the screening at Bernade and everyone was, you know, tearing up, so. Yeah, and I think it's also really interesting that it, it becomes a dialogue between generations implicitly because of who's making the film and who's making the film about. Um, and I think that's also a narrative that comes up in a number of the films, both in the programme as a whole, but particularly in these three. Um, he made this, uh, Suhaib made this really lovely statement in his Q&A for the New York African Film Festival, which is that the reality in Sudan is full of fiction and the work of a documentarist is to search and discover this fiction, which I liked as a framing to think about, you know, we talk so much about documentary and truth, but actually there's so many stories. Um, it resonates about the macro of politics and how it shapes our lives, the micro of the interpersonal family dynamics and the stories we tell ourselves. Um, that's very much the work that Marianne Khoury, Khoury is doing, leaning into the unspoken and the unsaid in Let's Talk, in which she reflects on generations of women in her family whose lives orbited around cinema through the defining work of Yusuf Shaheen, her uncle, whose work she also produced. لا مش عني مع مين؟ انتي ناسية اصلا بتعملي فيلم عن ايه؟ لا لا envie de comprendre un peu plus les femmes de, de la famille. Parce que je suis une femme, parce que j'ai une fille, parce que, parce que je suis comme ça, c'est mon mécanisme, bien sûr, que je te dis. Tout de fait que la télé. Tout de fait que la télé. Mais... Mais... Je te colle la hague de la télé. Et Elle m'a dit. Elle m'a dit. Um, I'll preface my question with context for those who have yet to discover Shaheen's work. Um, I've, I could talk about the 40 plus films that he's made spanning decades and genres and topics, but for me the most palpable reflection of his legacy is that when you arrive in Cairo, there's a large framed picture of Yusuf Shaheen at the airport above the door to exit, so you enter the city from that frame. And so against this backdrop, I'm curious to ask you both the significance of this film that kind of delves into a much more personal space. Um, an intimacy, a lens on the women's invisible realities, um, Marianne Khoury's attempt at an honesty for a benefit of a new generation for her daughter, Sarah, who's also at the heart of the film. Yeah, I mean, okay, so, so this film has a, we have a connection to this film in many ways. I mean, this is Yusuf's family, first of all. And second, I mean, Zawiya would not have been possible without Yusuf Shaheen, Marianne, and the company that he established. So we're sort of like really uh, practically, but also like um, spiritually in some way connected to this lineage, right? So for us, both in different ways, it's a, it's a very like, um, for me, it's like a good luck charm. Like I, 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 the film, for me, has that feeling, um, and you know, it's interesting, of course, that the that Marianne is able to use all this, like, you know, archive of family footage, uh, all these like interviews that she's been filming over the years, aimlessly, really, because she wasn't making a film as she was recording all of these interviews. Um, and then, you know, wait for the right moment that, that felt like she needed to make that film 
because of probably a lot of personal factors, but also like this connection with the daughter and like this intergenerational uh, relationship that really revolves around film and sort of is able to give us like um, a glimpse of not only just like film history, but also the, um, you know, the, the personal relationships, the familial bonds and all of these things that go into the, the work of making a film and, and, and then also how film enables us to um, sort of um, explore like or navigate or maybe even heal from very intense family relationships or like family experiences that um, can haunt us in, in, in some ways, right? So, um, so there's definitely like, you know, the, what you were saying about Tusa Shaheen being uh, in, the, in the Cairo airport when you land. For me, this film is sort of like a, a demystification, but also an homage to him as a human and to his family as people and to all the people that are around him as opposed to just a reproduction of that symbol, right? Of this like national icon, so to speak. Uh, I'm close to this film in uh, so many ways and uh, I've seen it uh, come to life. Uh, and I've, uh, I've seen, I mean, the process through which it came to life, which for me was quite impressive because I, I saw uh, Marianne going into the editing room for you know months and months and months, and I had no idea what she was doing. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. I knew nothing about the film until it came to life and I saw it for the first time. And and I feel like in many ways that she made a film uh, that is so rich out of so little. But she had it's because she had you know it 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 came at a time like Alia said where she she felt that there was something that she really needed to uh, to let out. And I saw how uh, liberating it was for her to 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 tell her story in the way she wanted to, uh, linking it to her daughter, to her mother, to her uncle, to the archive of the family, to to this footage that she's been. Uh, you know, compiling for and collecting for years and years, not knowing what the end result would be. Uh, it just tells you that you can do uh, really powerful films with not very much. And that's also something that I, 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 I got to learn from, from her process. I really, um, I really did. I mean, I remember the, I mean, her foot, I, I, all I knew that she, she, you know, she took her iPhone out a few times and started uh, filming Sarah uh, and her, you know, a few conversations. And that ended up being the foundation for, you know, everything else that was told throughout. So it just started with a conversation between her and her daughter on one uh, random day. Uh, and, and then uh, the inspiration came from there. Yeah, that's really interesting to hear. I like quite early on, she does talk about the kind of lack of um, just filming as it is without setting things up and without kind of pretending. And it really speaks to this notion of just talking and just saying those things. Um, and I think there's a really lovely balance between the documentaries and the kind of the fictional films in this program as well. Um, so for the, the Eagle Eye, there are a few cameos from Yusuf in it as well. Um, it brings an, another nice circularity so let's talk now about Ilya Suleiman's It Must Be Heaven. Uh, this was a long awaited feature by the Palestinian director known for his wry observations around absurdities of the occupation of his native Palestine. In this film, he plays himself again as the silent but wonderfully expressive central figure that he leaves Palestine to visit Paris and New York to find producers for his next film. What country do you come from? I'm Palestinian. Palestinian? I've never seen a Palestinian. Well, guess what? This ride is on me. Darna, I can't see you. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to Bienvenue à Paris. Merci. Are you Brigitte? 
We are looking for Brigitte. to my very good friend. He's doing a comedy right now about peace in the Middle East. That's funny already. What do you make of the fact that Suleiman has turned his camera to Paris and New York, which are ostensibly film hubs, they're spaces of money. Um, what is he saying about the industry in relation to Arab cinema, in relation to narratives of Palestine? There's always this question about you know, our relationship to funders, the relationship to, you know, uh, audiences' expectation, and like this notion that there can't be a Palestinian film that's funny, uh, or like there can't be a, a, an Arab film that's just like about something as mundane as maybe, I don't know, someone's relationship to their dog. There has to be something else. Like there has to always be like this, um, you know, major political, event that's making this like a very intense film to watch and there's always this question right like is it is it always going to be on you know the, the is the burden of representation always on us always going to be on us in that particular way and then this this clip you know it's with Ilya's like really interesting and like almost like expressionless face this is, I think, the way we feel in many ways. It's just like you're talking to people who are saying things like, you know, no, your film is not Arab enough. Like, what, what does that mean? Like, or like, your film is not political enough. Like, who are you to tell me what's political and what's not political? And where is this idea coming from? Um, and, you know, while there are so many filmmakers, not just from the Arab world, because I don't think it's, um, I don't think this is a problem that's specific to the Middle East, it's also an issue with Latin America. It's also an issue with Africa. And it's also an issue with, you know, Black filmmakers in the US, Indigenous filmmakers all over the world. So it's like, you know, these like minorities sort of are like, you know, that are expected to, we're not really minorities, we're actually majority, but whatever. Uh, but like the expectation that we're going to be telling these stories in this particular way to appeal to an audience that we, quote unquote describe as international but is actually really white uh, is something that I think is a global issue and I think it must be heaven brilliantly captures this dilemma that I think we're all more or less grappling with and humor seems for me at least to be the most adequate way to respond to it because if we don't use humor I think we'll just go crazy and be very angry so just to round off on, in terms of these three films, I really felt there was a kind of nostalgia, a kind of like passing the baton to a new generation in all of them. And, you know, perhaps these structural changes that we're all talking about, they also need for kind of different perspectives. And it might be that different, you know, different mediums, different technologies do something to start breaking down those structures a little bit in ways that perhaps we didn't imagine them or, or other filmmakers from the past didn't imagine them. Um, and there's a quote in the introduction to your season from Sarah Francis's kind of moving and meditative film, As Above, So Below, which is, it was believed that meaning would inhabit us, then withdraw just like the tide. It's, it's like a line of pure poetry. And I just wondered whether you could reflect on that in this kind of notion of generations and, and also perhaps thinking of yourselves as part of this new generation that's kind of moving something forwards. I think we're getting old. There's a Gen Z now that's just going to like, you know, take over. Zawiya is going to be like the establishment in a couple of years. Um, but I think um, I, I see what you're saying about the 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 gener like the generational um, resonance here. But I think when we chose that quote, it was more 
um, sort of like exercising a right to be somewhat um, ambiguous or, you know, a right, the right to opacity to quote Glisson, because I can't not do that. Uh, you know, that, that these films, most most of most of most of the time are expected to give meaning in the most um, concrete and very like spell out exactly what they're about and explain their realities, explain where they're coming from, educate you know the audience about so many things, and that's a that's a burden. That's not necessarily something that we have to you know keep doing. It's, it's fine for the meaning to, you know, ebb and flow. It's fine for it to come and go and it's fine for it to be, uh, you know, in and out in that way because, you know, we also have a right to play. We also have a right to be poetic and we also don't have to be like stuck in that, um, you know, cinema of urgency or like a crisis cinema or, you know, social realism for the rest of our lives. You know, there are other films being made and there are other realities out there. And I think the quote, comes from this uh, more than the generational part of it, but I think it's really interesting how you made the connection. Um, and maybe Yusuf can talk a little bit about this um, question of generations, because we always talk about how our audience at Zawiya now are people we don't know and we, that we feel old and like, you know, obsolete in, in some way. So. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we are about to pass on uh, our project to the next generation. <laughs> so, uh, uh, it's interesting uh, that in Cairo, uh, I mean, our big, big uh, part of our audience base is young. Uh, and I always found that to be really interesting uh, because I know that in, in other Europe and other parts of the world, it's, it's different. And I would feel it when, you know, going to the cinema and, and seeing that, Average age is quite high. Uh, here, it's it's the opposite, and it's it. They seem to get younger, and uh, we we seem to get be you know like uh, seven years on. We we feel a bit out of touch. So it's interesting that uh, this is this 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 dynamic is is happening here, and we. It's important for us to always be in touch with our audience to really understand what is happening, to be engaged with them in so many ways to. And uh, also, you know, and, and so this is why we, we, we also value a lot of our collaborations here and to always make sure that we're right and we're working we're, with different people, different creators, uh, programmers and so on, so that uh, the project can stay alive and the cinema kits and its program can always be relevant to what is happening here. So. Uh, it's always important to reflect on that and to, you know, also make sure that we're always evolving in and responding to whatever is happening. So uh, it's not, you know, as if we are just started this and like blindly, uh, you know, working towards a, a certain uh, path. No, we're, we're like constantly questioning this, um, qu constantly trying to seek new uh, ideas, new inspirations. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, we'll see uh, what happens in the next few years. Uh, this, this, I mean, everything changes so fast here, so, so you have to constantly be alert and up to date. So before we wrap, I wanted to ask you to tell me briefly about one film that really captured you or really surprised you. And for me, the, the film that really has made a place in my heart is 143 Sahara Street by Hassan Farhani which kind of meanders around this, this wonderful woman, Malika, who lives alone in the middle of the desert running this makeshift um, cafe out of her home where she only serves two things, uh, tea and omelettes. And it's a kind of like observational documentary of the most beautiful kind, the kind of charming intimacy, but also these really surprising moments of unexpected humor it has this incredible gentle sway, which I think just is so um, like what I go to the cinema for to kind of stop time completely and to leave and to have kind of forgotten which city I'd entered the cinema in, if that makes sense. So, um, and this is what kind of programs like this can really be, like spaces where you can discover something, you can go in 
and say, okay, I, I know these guys, or I know this film, maybe I should try something else out. Um, so if you had to pick one that really kind of stays with you or challenged you or surprised you, what would that be? I will choose Columbus. The, I remember uh, being, you know, so surprised by this film and so confused but inspired in really like very strange ways. I, it started as something and it ended as, as something completely different. And it, it stayed with me for a while afterwards. And I, I still, till now, I remember the sound design and the, the, the cinematography and the music. And, 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 and I don't know, this film, quite haunted me after watching it. And uh, that's what cinema is for. for I mean, I wanna, I wanna be shocked like this. I wanna, I want, I wanna go, go out of a screening and, and, you know, for the next two, three hours, feel like the, the film is still with me and still quite, you know, I, I can feel it. And then, and then Alay Dean Slim, the director is really like, all his films are quite uh, interesting in, uh, in very different ways. And, uh, and also because I, I personally know the, the, the main actor of Lomas uh, on a personal level, so this also added a, a touch, an unexpected touch. I didn't even know he was in there. And I saw this film uh, with no expectations whatsoever. I had no idea what it would be. And I was really, really uh, pleasantly uh, surprised. I, th I, think, uh, I think for me, it's actually As Above, So Below uh, by Sarah Francis. I, I mean, I really love this film so much. I just, when I saw it, I was like, I haven't seen anything like this from, you know, like in Arab cinema for a, for a long time. And, and in many ways, it's unlike, it's unlike anything else. And she manages to do uh, so much with very little. Like this film is one of those that are, that are, it's like very low budget. And it shows, I think, in, in some ways in the image and how like unglossy the image is in many ways, but still, but still very, um, I don't know, like calming in, in some way. And the way she uses the juxtaposition of like text image and how she doesn't really situate you anywhere. You're just like in a vast landscape and there's a swing and then there's a moon and there's like, you know, like um, a brief sort of like, not brief, but just a very, a uh, subtle way of, you know, talking about the colonization of space and how we're now extracting resources from the moon, literally. Um, you know, so I think this film is, you know, because I don't know if we can say that there is um, a lot of feature length Arab films that we can consider experimental. Um, in you know in, in recent years there are some but they're mostly like artist films um so i think this film does something really interesting um in terms of allowing us to imagine what that could look like and how that can be made uh, without having to fundraise insane amounts of money to do it thank you both um for this really fascinating discussion and thank you to everyone watching at home um, as the breadth and brilliance of films in this season illustrates, Arab cinema is blooming and internationally increasingly visible, but it does actually also depend on audiences. So support the directors that you want to see more of, seek out their films, share, the, share your thoughts, and look out for the films in this season and support independent cinema wherever you can. Um, the season at the BFI South Bank runs through September and October, and you can watch Talking About Trees, Let's Talk, and It Must Be Heaven on the BFI player. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.